Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog Channel. It's Tuesday, that makes it Lightroom Tuesday, and today we're going to look at some of the updates that are there with the Lightroom December updates. Hey folks, so we got some updates this morning. Uh, well, this morning my time, late last night in the US. And they include things like a new auto, uh, an extra range mask features and a few new things inside Lightroom CC and for iOS as well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to jump in and just start looking at them basically. So the first thing is I have this image here and uh, you could use auto on it here but this is how it would look if you did it in Lightroom 7 and previous. So this is an auto that I applied before I did the update. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to another image here altogether. This is the original image again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on auto, which is the new auto. And what this auto does is, as you can see here, it uses vibrance and saturation, whereas the old one, if you go back here, doesn't use vibrance and saturation. You can also see it's only done a small bit with shadows and highlights and a little bit of highlights and nothing with blacks. Um, whereas if I go on to the new one, we can see that it has actually used pretty much everything here and it has also used vibrance and saturation. So it's a much, much more pleasing result in my opinion. Uh, the idea is that the AI looks at what people have processed before in the past and it comes up with something that would be similar to how it feels a human would do it rather than a machine is doing it. So it's using machine learning, which is fantastic. The next thing I'm going to look at is range masks. I'm just going to jump into the brush here. And I have the mask overlay turned on. You turn that on and off with O. And I'm just going to very quickly paint across the building here. So as you can see, there's lots of edges going on and things like that. OK, but I don't really, really want that. Uh, and of course, there's a colored aspect to this as well as a range or a luminance range. But I'm going to go for color specifically in this case here. And I am going to go and I'm going to click on it. So if I just grab the eyedropper, I click where I want to add it. And now I'm going to shift click and add more areas to it. But let's say you accidentally add somewhere that you didn't want. What you can do here is if you hold down the alter option key, you now can click on that point and it will get rid of it. So as you can see, we've got a nice clean edit there on just most of the building. So that is a great new addition to Range Mask, which is already a fantastic tool. So now I'm going to jump across to Lightroom CC. So this is Lightroom CC, which also got the auto. In this case, this is a very dark image and I deliberately want it dark. So when I click auto, it does fix it. It does make it like it should be properly exposed, but that's not what I want for this image. So in this case, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to undo that. Beside that, you can quite clearly see the new tone curve icon. So we click that on. We start off here. We got the parametric curve here selected at the moment because that's what I had a minute ago. I think it normally comes on to the point curve. So this is similar to the original tone curve that was in Lightroom before the point curve was added. And I don't generally use this. Uh, but you do have the point curve for your RGB curve where you've got way more control. So I can brighten that. And then, of course, using the RGB channels, you can then have a little bit of color tone going on as well. Now, I have switched this so that we can see all curves. And you get that. I'll show you where you get that in two seconds. So blue and then highlights. So I'm just making changes here. You do that here um, by show all curves. So you can snap to the grids, copy channels, and then, of course, you can reset from there if you need. Uh, if you're in the parametric curve, you get a separate one here for reset all. OK. So the other thing that you've got as well is now in effects, you now have split toning. So the way it works is you literally click on the one you want to use. So shadows are selected here. So I'm going to go for a kind of a green and teal look. So there's a bit of green. Select the highlights. So not green and teal. I keep saying that. Teal and orange. OK, so some orange there. And let's say we want the balance to go towards the orange. We can do that. If we want it to go towards that kind of tealy color, we can. So that is split toning. So pretty straightforward. Great additions to Lightroom CC. Starting to move it along the path of having some of the stuff that's in Classic. No, Classic is not going away anytime soon. But Lightroom CC will continue to get more and more features to bring it up to parity at some stage. So the other thing I'm going to look at now is a cool new feature for iOS. So here we are with iOS, and I'm going to jump out here and I'm going to select the LR button, the little icon you see there. I'm going to go down to see sharing options. And here we now have this watermark section here. And I go include to turn it on, and that gives me access to customize. If I move down here with customize, 
you can see that I can go for text. So I can choose a different font if I want it. So we can have American typewriter, for example, here. Uh, I can make it bold or not, or italic if I want it. No, there's no italic for that particular font, obviously, so that's not working. And so you can have a white or black. And of course, then you can choose around the image where you want it to be. So let's just leave it in the center there for a second, and that will allow it to change. Now we can also change the size of it, the offset, and of course the opacity as well if you want. So folks, that's a look at some of the new features that have been launched this morning for the various different versions of Lightroom. There are more stuff than that with it, and there's lots and lots of bug fixes. So folks, like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you did like it, of course. If you didn't like it, um, yeah, mm, yeah, please do nothing, all right? Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified. Folks, thanks for taking time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one.